Lisa Popp with the Indiana Deafblind Services Project. We are a federal grant through the U.S. Department of Education Office of Special Education Programs, and we've been around for more than 30 years. Each state has their own deafblind project, and there is a national project over all of the states that's called the National Center on Deafblindness. So what do we do? The project's purpose is to improve educational services for Indiana's children and youth ages birth through 21 who have combined vision and hearing impairments. All of our services are completely free of charge, provided that that student has been identified as deafblind and reported to our registry. Then we provide the child's family and service providers, basically anyone who works with that child, support in the form of technical assistance and training, dissemination of resources and information, and connections to resources and other families and educators who have children who are deafblind. Um, some more specific detail on some of our services. As I said, we do have child-focused consultations. Um, a lot of those are visits to the home and to the classroom where we can talk with the family and with teachers about strategies that will help that child. We do some in-service training um, that might be a statewide conference, a small group training in a school or an agency, or even working with a team around a particular student. Um, we do person-centered planning and facilitation. We do have a newsletter. It's currently focused on transition. It's called Transition Briefs for Families. We have a library with about 500 different items, primarily books and videos that can be accessed from our website. We have online training modules. We actually have over 27 on a variety of topics such as communication, behavior, and literacy. The um, registry of students is something that we do every year in conjunction with the December 1 child count. We are required to conduct or to con collect information on students who have both vision and hearing impairment. And at the current time, we have approximately 237 students identified. You can actually report students through our website at any time during the year. And we welcome you to do that. If you have questions about whether a student is um, eligible for our services, then just contact us and we'll help you figure that out. We also have a YouTube channel. Um, and on that channel, we have recordings of recent presentations. We do have some playlists that have short two to three minute clips around strategies of working for working with students who are deafblind. So it's got a lot of nice information. I wanna finish up here with who is it that we serve because there's a lot of confusion about what deafblind means. It's not just totally deaf and totally blind. Our definition, the both state and federal mirror each other. And it basically says that the student must have a hearing and vision loss that occurs together the very hearing and vision loss causes communication and behavioral needs that affect the student's educational performance and that the student can't be served adequately in programs that are designed just for the visually impaired or the hearing impaired. That also includes individuals who have conditions that may worsen over time, like a student with Usher syndrome, or children who have inconsistent responses or function as if they have both a hearing and vision loss. That's particularly true of the students that we have identified who are deafblind and have multiple disabilities. Okay, so we hope that you will take a little time at some point and visit our project's website or follow us on Facebook. And those are on this um, slide for you to see. We also have that YouTube channel and I welcome you to come and visit that as well. Thank you.